voice in the room. If you know something is working out for you, your hands ought to be up. Your mouth ought to be open. Come on, somebody scream in here. Somebody shout in here. They're working, they're working. Hey, I said they're working, they're working. It's all working. It's all working. It's all working. Hey. I want you to do me a favor. I feel like something special is going to happen in this room tonight. And I feel like I've got a few people in the room that came not for an anniversary, but you came because you needed something from God. I want you to testify to as many people as you can. Everything is working for me. Come on. Come on. I said, everybody around you, tell them everything is working for me. The heartbreak is working. The stress is working. Everything that I've had to endure is working for me. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. It's working for me. You know that it's working for you. I want you to put those hands together. And I want you to give Jesus praise. Come on. Come on. You didn't come here on a Sunday night just to do it like that. But I said give Jesus praise. Come on. From the rising of the sun to the very setting of the same, his name is worthy to be praised. It's, he's worthy. I said he's worthy. Don't praise him for any other reason except for the fact that 
he be worthy? worthy. I said he's worthy. worthy. So worthy. worthy. So worthy. worthy. I'm trying to get you caught in. Woo. I'm already where I need to be. Worthy. Catch up with me. I said he's worthy. If you're not standing, just step up on your feet and shout, worthy. You didn't use no emphasis in your voice. I said jump up on your feet and shout, worthy. worthy. He's so, so, so worthy. Hey, I said he's so, so, so worthy. So worthy he is. <laughs> Come on, shift. Well, do what you came to do and shift this room. <laughs> shift this room. Lord, shift me again. Ah! One more time before it's all said and done. Somebody shout shift. Shift. Shift my money. Shift my family. Shift my mind, shift my heart. But you gotta shift something before I leave. You gotta shift something before I leave. It's eight o'clock, and the Super Bowl is going on. But there's a remnant that gathered because I need to be shifted. That's why I came tonight. I came to be shifted. Just do me a favor. Take a couple of steps out of your seat and shout, shift me, Lord. Shift me. Hata, asha, another buckle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, mama. Ho, ho. Sheba. Hey. All right. Woo. Shift me, Lord. Shift me. I feel something stirring. I feel something breaking. I feel something moving. I don't need a song. I need a shift. I don't need another sermon. I need a shift. Do it now. Do it now. Somebody lift your hands and shout now. Shift me. Shift me. On your way down to your seat, just tell everybody, shift me, Lord. Shift me. You may be seated. I'm on time constraints. You may be seated. This is what I came to do. It is of the Lord's mercies. That we have not been consumed. His loving compassions, they fail us not. And they are new every morning. On your way down to your seat, as loud as you can, look at your neighbor and tell him, God's going to shift me tonight. Yeah! Tonight. I'm not waiting until tomorrow. Tonight. I put a demand on his presence. To meet my need. I put a demand on his presence to come through for me again. We gotta go. We gotta move. But clap your hands real fast. Feels like church. Clap those hands. Ship, ship, ship. Ship, ship, ship. Everything. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Yeah. Certainly, we're glad to be here tonight. We're glad to be here for anniversary number three.
went through too much not to get shifted. I came to get what I needed from God. Is there anybody in here that came with a need? Let me just see your hand. If you came with a need, if you came with a need, I dare you to jump up and start praising God right now. Come on, everybody. Come on, start praising. Start praising him. I said, if you got a need, jump up and praise him now. Everybody. Is that okay? be seated. Come on, clap all of clap, clap, clap. I'm praising him because he's going to shift me. I'm praising him because he's going to shift me. So glad you all made it tonight to celebrate with us through dangers, toils, and snares. I'm glad you made it. You're seated, but on your way down, you're telling your neighbor, I'm glad you made it anyway. Be seated. Y'all gonna stare at him or you gonna help him praise him? Somebody run up here and help him. Come on. Somebody. Somebody.
Welcome to the third anniversary of the shift experience. And for the last three years, we've been gathering in big numbers, gathering in small numbers, and bringing revival to whoever needs revival. I'm so glad you all came and joined us tonight. I'm trying to let all of that go. On, lift your voice and give Jesus a praise, everybody. Come on, if he is your Lord, if he is your Savior, your Redeemer, I dare you to praise him with your mouth now. Come on, open your mouth, lift your hands, give God praise, everybody. Give him praise, give him praise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let all be seated to no praises. Certainly I am, I am honored, I am privileged, and I'm so very happy that you all made the decision to join us here. Would you do me a favor and celebrate God for three years of ministry? Come on. Come on, would you clap a little harder? Would you stand? Whew, come on, three years, and um, we're here, some of you were here on our very first day, and for some of you today is your very first day, I just want to honor everybody we need to honor, can we honor Bishop Sheldish Green, come on, would you stand and honor Bishop Shelvis Green, who's here with us tonight, this is his facility if you didn't know, clap a little louder. us to come here. This is the second year in a row he has privileged us to be here, and we are so very glad. I got some pastors here. Pastor Sherry Williams, Bishop, my aunt, Bishop Linda Spence is here. Would you help me celebrate, Bishop? Come on. I'm so happy she's here with us tonight. Would you help me celebrate? Dr. Antoinette Goodrich is here. Come on. Pastor Sandy Barr is here. Come on, let's celebrate him. Pastor Darren Mathis is here. Let's celebrate him. Coming through the crowd is Bishop Eric Figueroa. Would you celebrate him as he comes? Amen. And I am so very glad that our guest speaker is in this room. He has come, him and some of those that are with him, Pastor Gerald Pelissero, and some of the Leaders at the All Nations Worship Assembly. Would you help me honor our guest speaker, Apostle Matthew Stevenson, who's here in the room with us? Come on. Man, I am, I am so honored and I'm so glad that um, he consented to being with us. I would have it no other way. Pastor Vincent Bohannon is here as well. Come on. Let's celebrate Pastor Vincent Bohannon. Amen. Listen, we're going to move quickly. We're going to move quickly because I want to hear the word of the Lord. And I most certainly want to hear uh, Vincent Bohannon and SOV. Listen, it's offering time. Would you clap your hands and thank God for what we're getting ready to give? I know many of you in this room, we are church kids. We are church babies and we are church people. And so we understand what a meeting like this, the undertaking of that, is very expensive. And so we want to gather here tonight, and we want to be a blessing. We want to be a blessing not to me, not to the preacher, but we want to be a blessing to the shift experience. 
We want to be a blessing to a ministry that for the last three years, every second Sunday, you can find us doing the work of the Lord. Now, some people can only do ministry when there's a large crowd. Some, some people can only do things when people are watching. But Pastor Barron, we have learned how to do stuff in small crowds. Come on, medium-sized crowds. We learned how to do it with large crowds. And so this is nothing new to us. I wonder if I could get 20 people to join us with a $100 gift today. Uh, 20 people that can join us. When you have that, I want you to stand. I want you to stand. Some of our staff has already given. Y'all stand. Amen. Amen. I got a few. I got a few. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come on. I got eight people. Thank you, Jesus. I've got nine. You're watching us online. Do me a favor while you're getting that. Would you celebrate our streaming audience that's watching us? We are so glad that you chose to join us. And you can see the giving options right there on your screen. We want you to join in with that offering as well. I believe I've got 10. Come on, I need 10 more people. I need 10 more people that can join us with that gift today. That can join us with that. I've got 11. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I need a few more. Come on, join us, join us, join us, join us. If they're out there, let them in, let them in. Because they may have what we need. You know what you mean? <laughs> Just let them right in. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can give through Cash App. Our Cash App is the dollar sign J Spence M I N. J S P E N C E M I N. You can give through your card, your credit card, your debit card, or we will take your cash. If you have that, I want you to stand. Let me see you. Let me see. I got about 12 people so far. Come on. I need a few more in this room that can assist us with this, that we may do what we need to do. But we're not going to take all night. Thank you, Jesus. And so if you don't have that $100 gift, if you don't have that $100 gift, I want you to get the closest thing that you can and jump to your feet. Come on, everybody, everybody, everybody. Get whatever you have and jump to your feet. Jump to your feet. Jump to your, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's next to you and they say, I ain't got no money. Give them a dollar so that they can sow in God's house. Sell them 50 cents. So that they can give tonight. I'm waiting for a few more of you. We're all giving together. We're all giving together. We're all giving together. We've got people from all over that are here. We've got Jersey's here. We've got Brooklyn is here. We've got Harlem here. We've got Queens here. I've seen a couple people from Connecticut in the room. Buffalo, New York is in this room. We thank God for those that came all the way from Buffalo. Amen. We are so grateful. Amen. With that offering, I want you to lift it. Father, we thank you. Come on, lift that offering, that cash, that phone, that card. Father, we thank you for every seed. We thank you for every sower. Now, Father, we pray that this seed would be a blessing to your kingdom that this seed would be a great addition to what's happening at the shift experience. Father, I pray that you would bless your people because some people sacrificed to sow today. And so, Father, we thank you for their obedience and their willingness to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I want you to bring that. If you've got cash, bring it, bring it, bring it. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. If you've got that card, bring it. Play me something that just sounds good. Amen. The Cash App, one more time. 
It's the dollar sign. J Spence M I N. J S P E N C E M I N. Pastor Vincent Bohannon and SOV are coming now. J Spence M I N. One second. Listen. I, for those of you that are so for those of you that are not giving right now, I've got a task for you. Pull out your phone. Come on, everybody, take your phone out. Come on, take it out. You, some of you already have it out. Take, take out your phone. And I want you to go to the Shift Experience on Facebook, and I want you to share that to your page right now. Come on, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Share that onto your page. Let those that you have influence over take part in what's going on here at the shift. They're still coming. SOV is coming. SOV is coming. SOV is coming. those hands. Come on. Everybody sing, Lord. Sing, Lord. Sing, Lord. I want to thank you. So, come on, clap your hands real fast. Come on. I want it to sound like church. Clap those hands. Hey. Come on. Come on, clap, clap, clap those hands. for your giving. Come on, let's thank God. I said clap your hands for your giving. Amen. Listen, I'm so glad he's coming. He's not going to be long. I'm so glad that my best friend is here today and he has actually been one of the reasons that we even started the shift 
in the very first place. And so I'm so glad that Pastor Vincent Bohan and, and SLV, could y'all clap for them? They're coming. They're getting ready to bless us. SLV, if you're here, you can start coming now. Amen. They're coming. Thank God for Pastor Damon back in the room. Y'all like Pastor Damon? All the way from Mount Vernon. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're running in from my church. Amen. And uh, so please forgive us. There's some people that are on their way still, but we're so glad. Uh, to come tonight just to praise and worship the Lord with all of you. It is an honor and a privilege just to be here. Can you clap your hands for this movement, this great movement, the shift movement? Amen. This is an honor, amen, for us to come here. Amen. And uh, we are so glad to be here. Firstly, giving honor to the pastor of this house, amen, and his wife, amen. I think this was the first place where we came to sing almost nine years ago. Amen. Now, and this is the first church that we came to. Amen. It was like a trillion of us. Amen. And uh, But we're so glad to be here. And everyone, the speaker, amen, of the hour, and everyone who is here, amen. I'm just so glad to be here. We've been in church all day long. Amen. And I love everything about it. Amen. And I know that there is another level Amen, that the Lord is going to take us uh, for tonight. Amen. And so it's just a few of us here tonight. And as the people come, amen. Hey, Bree, is that Bree Holland? Praise the Lord. Is that Bree? Okay, cool. Amen. We're going to call on her today. Amen. But we're going to do what we always do. This is our, we believe God. Amen. I told my church that this was the month that God responds. He's giving answers, strategies, and instructions. Amen. And so there's 16 days left in this month. Look at somebody say, any day now. God is going to do what he said he would do. And he may not come when you want him, but I know he'll be right on time. Can we do it together, New York? Come on, y'all. Everybody get up on your feet and let's sing it together. Come on, y'all. Hey. Everybody say, anything now, anything now, come on y'all, God will, God will, what he said he would do, come on y'all, he may not come, oh, when you want him, come on y'all, hey, but I know, but I know, y'all put your hands together, hey, Clap your hands and say, any day now, any day now, God will do, yeah, 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 Woo! come on y'all, he may not come, yeah, when you want him, hey, but I know, but I, come on y'all, everybody say, see right on time, yeah. Everybody say, but I know, but I gotta come down here. Come on, y'all. See, right on time, yeah. You'll be right on time, yeah. Woo! It's always there, yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Everybody say, but I know. We gonna do it one more time. Right on time, yeah. It's always there. Come on, church. Woo! Everybody say, but I, hey, but I. Put your hands together. 
Everybody see, but I know, yeah. Come on, y'all. Everybody see, but I know. My favorite part, y'all. Hey, everybody see God is coming through. Woo! Whatever you need from the Lord, see God is coming through. Yes, Lord. Whatever you need from the Lord, see God is coming through. Come on, y'all. Whatever you need of the Lord, see God is coming through. Everybody say. Everybody put it in the atmosphere and say he's if you need healing in your body look at somebody right here and say he's gonna somebody needs peace in your mind everybody say he's gonna do it hey can we take it up right here y'all let's take it up like Brooklyn hey everybody see God is coming true Whatever you need from the Lord, see God is coming through. Hey, whatever you need from the Lord, see God is coming through. Woo! Whatever you need from the Lord, see everybody jump. Hey, everybody move. Wow. Everybody say, be gonna. I need everybody. Say he's gonna do it. Y'all sound real good. Everybody say, everybody say, he's gonna do it. Yeah, come on, y'all. Put your hands together and say he's gonna do it. I miss you in church. Everybody say, come on, soprano, he is gone. Come on, alto, say he. Come on, tennis, say. Can I get everybody to see it? Put your hands together, y'all. Come on, y'all, see it tonight. Everybody say he's gonna. Everybody say he's gonna. Whatever you need from the Lord tonight. Whatever you want from the Lord tonight. Just lift those hands and say, yeah. Right here, y'all say, everybody see what I know. Y'all cap right there. Hey, everybody see what I put your knees to it. Hey, every. Come on, y'all. Everybody see what I know. Oh, but I. No music, y'all. I want the whole house to say it, but I know. Hey. But I know it'll be right. Come on, church. Hey, but I know. But I know it'll be right. Come on, y'all. Sing tonight. But I know. But I know it'll be right. Everybody sing. But I know. Hey, I know. I know. Let the music play. Let the music play. Everybody move. Hey, 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 hey. I don't see I'm moving. Look at your neighbor and say, let's move together. Everybody move. Hey, hey, everybody move. Hey. Last time, everybody. Everybody sing, but I know. Look at somebody and say, God is, he's coming through. Look at somebody and say, make way for the Lord. Look at somebody else and say, make way for the miracle. Make way for the blessing. Make way for the overflow. Make way, make way, make way, he's coming. Just tell somebody and say, he's coming. He's coming through. I believe God.
Wouldn't be church without it. License plate, KVB661, <laughs> Nissan Black. Please move your car immediately. Amen. Look at somebody else and say, God is still coming through. I'm going to call my sister Bree Holly. I wrote this song for her. It just says, Jesus saved the day. She just had her concert the other week. I wish I was able to come. She's been a blessing to us. Amen. It's so good to see you. Oh, my God. Jesus saved the day. Look at somebody say, he brought me out. Can we just have a little church for a moment? We're going to do it together. Jesus, I 
standing everybody stand everybody standing everybody as you're standing you'd look over at somebody and tell them I'm glad he brought me out 
as we're standing, as we're standing. That's why I'm putting the man of God right up because I don't want this to go anywhere. As we're standing, as we're standing, this is what I'm going to sometimes in just one second. Sometimes in New York church culture, we value everything except for the word of God. And so I hate that I even have to make these announcements, but if you got to go, you can leave now. Please don't get up and start leaving when the word of the Lord is being brought forth. How many people need to hear something from the Lord today? Let me see your hands. Let me hear your mouth if you need something from the Lord. The same black Nissan. Pastor Vincent just announced it's still. Please do not park across the street because they will tow your car. 2022. Somebody shout 2022. 2022 brought a host of new things for me personally. And one of the the most amazing things happened this year. The Lord connected me to one of the greatest preachers that this world has ever seen, Apostle Matthew Stevenson. And um, he has made space for me. He's made time for me. And he has allowed me into his space. And I'm so very grateful. And it wouldn't feel like the shift anniversary if I didn't bring him here. And so I'm so happy that on year number three, we get to celebrate this great milestone and accomplishment with none other than Dr. Matthew Stevenson of the All Nations Worship Assembly, New York. Would you clap your hands? Would you yell? Come on, would you scream that as we honor the anointing on his life as he comes? Uh, we're going to go through our formalities. First of all, hi. Um, um, I don't know who that woman of God was. I don't know what y'all want me to say uh, after that. But uh, I wouldn't be me if I didn't let you holler just a little more. The Bible said they overcame them by the word of the, the, the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. And uh, we're growing into a tradition where people just shout for no reason. But I, I just want you to put your hand on your chest. And so I still have a reason. And, and the reason is, he did do that. And, okay. Yeah, he did that. He brought me out. That's exactly what happened. All right. I'm trying not to holler. So, we, so we're going to get, <laughs> we're going to get through our formalities. Um, while you're on your feet, I will not be before you long. But he did do it. And so what we're going to do is um, I want to acknowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I want to acknowledge, come on y'all, you're going to lose your speaker, okay, I want to acknowledge the great host, Bishop, thank you so very much for your kindness, come on, in a generation where being hospitable is foreign, I honor you, thank you so very much, to this legend, Bishop Figueroa, I honor you so very much, kind sir, thank you, um, to all the ministry gifts in the room, first of all, hi, second of all, thank you for everything you've done and do on the behalf of the saints of God. Uh, I really feel like one of the things that God is doing in this season is encouraging those that have led through uh, the most complicated time in U.S. history. Uh, I preface that by saying I am so godly proud. Um, come on, you can do better than that. Um, Three years may not seem like much to a lot of people, but you did it in a season where the whole nation was in a jungle, where people were losing their mind. I'm going to get there in a minute. And, 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 and their sanity was at stake, their vows before the Lord being revoked, and you stepped out and committed yourself to prayer. Thank you. You have no clue how many people in a generation you may have saved just by saying yes. Can we honor this great visionary? Come on, this son of thunder, he's going somewhere. Clap for him now, and not when he got a blue check. Put those hands together. Let's go.
All right, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Pastor Vincent, I love you to all the men and the women of God that are here. Um, please forgive me, this is my first Sunday back. And uh, one of the things as I am uh, uh, predominantly new to New York culture is y'all have a lot of church. Uh, and I'm not just saying it about this one. I'm talking about even in my own. I'm like, will you loose me and let me go? This is praise number six, and I'm ready to go home and get some chicken. Okay. So um, I'm not, I'm, I promise you, I'm not going to hold you there very long, but I do feel like God's got something to say. So forgive me if I uh, uh, abnormally violate hermeneutic principle. Go with me to Acts, the 16th chapter, please the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. It'll be very quickly, and you're going to get an abbreviated form of it because I want you to eat too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 5. When you're there, say, I'm there. If you're not there, say, wait on me. Now, did, can you stand, please? Now, I ain't got a word for you. Not y'all. You, just stand up. Put your, I, I promise you I'm not about to prophesy. Calm down. You ain't got to repent. <laughs> Get that Bible. When was the last time? This is almost like an ancient artifact. I have not seen a real paper Bible in a church service in so long. Thank you for sticking true to the study of the word of God. <laughs> I say open your Bible, and I'm Baptist, so you know I'm used to like licking pages and, and highlighting. So everybody be on their phone. It, kind of offends me as a preacher. Acts 16, 1, um, then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there, uh, and his name was Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek. I can never, and I'm not going to spend too much time here, I have never been able to understand why women who are excellent and excel will lessen their value just for the sake of not being lonely. I'll get there. We'll go there. Um, but <laughs> she was a Jewish, and, but his father was a Greek. Talk about unequally yoked. Don't get mad yet. Okay. Verse 2 which was well reported of by the brethren that were left at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. For they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Our primary thought, of course, is coming from verse 3. Him would Paul have go forth with him, and he took and circumcised him because of the Jews that were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. Lord, help me to preach this in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you to say something and just be hospitable and do so, and you may regret, regret saying this by the time you get home, maybe about 1 a.m. in the morning, you know, stuff start talking to you. So I want you to say it now and put it out in the atmosphere. Throw them hands up, if you will, and just scream, Lord, cut me. Okay, I'm going to make you say it again because I think, I don't think that hit you the way it should have hit you, okay? Now we pray, Lord, bless me, and we pray, Lord, keep me, and Lord, spare me. We pray, Lord, provide for me. I want somebody that's gotten just a little mature in the things of God. Throw them hands up and say, Lord, you can cut me. I, um, uh, y'all quiet already. Um, I, I certainly enjoy studying uh, the Torah, the Mishnah, the Pentateuch, the books of Moses. They all mean the world to me. And uh, in our investigation and research of said books, what we find is not just meaningless tradition. I know that very often in this era, we beat up on the law of Moses like it was all to be thrown away with, but there was principles behind the practice. So even if the practice changes, the principles remain the same. And, and what we should do is be very cautious not to be offended because they practice the principle differently from us. And uh, so one of the things that we find in Old Testament survey and 
plaid and landscape is, upon the eighth day, watch your mouth, upon the eighth day of the arrival of a man child, it was known and traditionally understood with very few theophanies as the exception, hmm, that what was to happen was no name was to be given to a son, the carrier of a seed, the one responsible for the stewardship of the story. I'm talking about an heir, somebody going somewhere. And uh, it would have it that Jehovah instructed Moses and he would let him know that a part of what I want as far as the Levitical law uh, is that I want you to think about what you're going to name it. It's going to mean something in a minute. Don't just call it Ray Ray Jr. or Lil Bessie or just make up something that's trendy. You know, for a season, everybody was naming their daughter Bella. Now, no offense if you're in here, but it was just the cute thing to do, you know. Uh, and it's always very, very, very unique to, uh, to discern what motivates people to name certain stuff, certain stuff. Like in the African American tradition, we name our cars. We name name our dogs. I mean, I had one of my dogs' name was D.O.G. I just wanted to be ghetto and different and let it sound like dog, but it really was not. So we named things, but that is not our biblical heritage. In the Old Testament concept, there would be the head of a house, as it were, where the mama didn't just wake up one day, with very few exceptions, and say this is going to be named this. It was a father. I'm almost there. Somebody who understood how to be escorted into realms of maturity. Somebody that had navigated through both the psychological and the emotional pressures that come with just trying to make it. They would have to be taken, listen to me, to amount to be circumcised. And if you study it scientifically, the vitamin E levels in the baby is not such that it could clot. So in the mercy of God, what the Lord did was wait for, guess, you guessed it, eight days so that that blood could cut, cut, cut and what would now cut him would not kill him. Because this cut was not a cut to inflict harm. It was a cut to remove the unnecessary. That was circumcision. <laughs> and so what happened, Sit. what happened is, uh, in the Old Testament we studied this practice before it was medical, it was a, the duty of a, a man who understood priestly aptitude and or capacity, a man who could pray. And when he learned how to pray, he learned how to cut. I'll get back there. So this is our tradition. Now, let's move this. Of course, I'm violating principle. Let's try to apply this contemporarily right how fast do we name it before we see if it can handle a cut I don't believe that's your friend for real you Negroes ain't had a real argument come on let's go to church we here and you ought not ask ever believe the representative that shows up on day one. Good God, friends. You gotta wait and see how they handle being fired. How they handle being let down. How they walk through grief or not. Can they be honest about their fears? And when it get cut, then you should trust it. But, but you never trust. I feel chilly now. You never trust something that can't be cut. Now, why this is important for you and I as I move my way through our thought, okay? Why this is important is because many of us uh, have been crying. I'm going to walk through this and navigate it and help you sojourn through these principles. The, the reason why this is odd to contemporary culture is because we like to name it first before we knife it. And, 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 and what that creates is a, a bunch of pre-me projects, pre-me conferences, stuff that you're really anointed to do just not now. Come on, don't get mad. It is the same assignment, but it's not a new trick. What the devil said to Jesus when he walked up to him was true. Yes, you will have all the kingdoms of the world, but what the devil tried to do, here we go, was give it to Jesus without Jesus having a process, because I don't trust a promise if it didn't get processed first. That's why we got dollar store miracles. I'm working in here. We've got to lie about stuff and exaggerate, and we got to compete and contrast and compare because the devil got us thinking that our difference is our demons and now we're at the place where we don't want just church I got to be cut if I'm going into this next season making more money oh good God from that more creativity and more innovation cut me and I'll be set free it, it was the, come on, I don't have a long time. It was the knife before the name. 
it was it was not the name before the knife and we're in a generation now where everybody wants the name I'm almost there this is just verse one but don't nobody want that knife they want special seating come on let's go but they don't want that knife they want a, a seal and a garment they want a robe and they want a collar they want to be endorsed by their favorite people but when you pull them off that stage and out of that talent and out of that gift because you know we really think come on I'm a bust in here that just because God used you he was pleased with you but God's using a whole lot of people that ain't in right standing with him and they're popular on earth and strangers in heaven but I want to know is anybody interested in being cut uh, it was the knife before the name now the enemy has taught us because we're still traumatized from that wilderness experience. God be praised. You know, Israel had to go through. We're still sink lining and streamlining this thought. You know, Israel went through a season of transition. And uh, when they got there, what's intriguing, I got to prove my point, okay? What's intriguing is God gave Joshua very specific instructions. We love Moses, good God. We honor Moses. Moses was a good man. He, he did a lot with his power and he used his mantle and he embarrassed Janus and Jambres. And he spit open the Red Sea, not through a staff and a rod, but through obedience to the unknown God. Oh, yes, he did. And then when he got here, Joshua now has a different set of instructions. Can I preach like I want to? And many of you are going to have to bear the pain of having a different set of instructions than that that went before you. They may have called your mama to do it, but it don't make it yours. It may have called your daddy to do it, but it don't make it yours. And there's a lot of people depressed. Yes, even in this room, because you don't know what to do next with your life. Because you're halting between pleasing your family and satisfying your future. But today, somebody's going to get the cut, the cut, the cut. Joshua, I got to receive a specific set of instructions and the instructions were I want you to get all of the military men don't you bring no punks with me in transition because when people go into transition they'll stay as long as there's lights and camera when it's exciting it tastes real good but when the excitement lifts because it will lift when the excitement lifts because it will church people are fickle I'll crack in here they'll find somebody to like tomorrow somebody to hate the next day they play Russian roulette with their relationships <laughs> To navigate their way into a place and so it's interesting that Joshua had to choose fighters because everybody needs somebody that will swing let me keep going he had to choose fighters and he had to choose men that could be cut with a knife that means that certain wars this is Bible could only be handled by cut men certain battles could only be handled by cut men uh, sis Baby girl, sugar, why are you trying to be in a covenant with something that don't like being cut? If he smacks you upside your head, you should have said amen earlier. And he has no man in his life with the authority to apply a thing to his flesh. You have no real safety emotionally. Anyway. So circumcision was there. So we, we see this principle where God does supernatural, bizarre things with men and women that can theoretically be circumcised. Come on, we're warming up to this really quickly. Got to go. And, and then Jeremiah prophesied something very unique. I believe it's the sixth chapter where, where he says, hey, to whom will I speak and give warning? Scream preach. I know that felt real weird, but just say it to your delegate and say preach. Jeremiah said, to whom will I speak and give warning? And who will heed my instructions? Let me go in here. Because we love the prophecies that tell you your social security number. Yeah, we love that stuff. We love to be impressed with the word of knowledge or simple Facebook scroll. And we honor that. We, I, we love when folk can tell us our names, our numbers, our address. Even if they have no real word, we're just fascinated. Because we think that because it's invisible and because it's supernatural, it's got to be from 
God. But there's a lot of stuff I'm working in here. There's a lot of stuff operating in the second heaven that know your name. Honey, if you don't believe me, go to the last time you was in sin. Satan know exactly who you are. Your nickname, your birth name, your first name, your mama's name. He knows you. To whom will I speak and give warning? Point I was making is we love prophecies that land us in the material. We have no appetite for warning. I'm going. We have no crave for it. We don't like to be warned because we're suffering from a, a, a culturally induced sickness called I'm grown. We're, we're, and yet we still taking out loans. How grown can you be when you're technically homeless because you can't put nothing in your name but a Facebook page? If you don't sit down, I'm working <laughs> in here. If you don't sit down and submit, stop hating it and study it, then God can allow that truth to catapult you. Here's what the prophet said. Their ear, I didn't know this, but Jeremiah, I'm, I'm going to start here. Their ear is not circumcised, which means that one of the, 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 the uh, your, your reproductive area is not the only thing that needs to be cut. Don't tighten up. <laughs> but we have scripture substantiation for your ear being circumcised. That was the last miracle of Jesus. I'm marching through this. It was a circumcision of a man's ear. I know my Bible. The servant's name was Malchus. And his name meant kingdom. The very last miracle of the fleshly Jesus Christ was restoring. Now I preach it this way so you can get it. In the movies they show Jesus getting down on the ground. Picking up the ear after Peter had swung on the boy. But that's not what my Bible tells me. Because it makes no sense that you save my soul and leave my hearing dirty he did not replace that ear with the old one my bible said he touched the place oh god where the ear was and he got a brand new ear so now i've got substantiation that sometimes unnecessary stuff can grow in the name of jesus i bind the captivity that's trying to operate in your ear gates everything trying to hypnotize you control you psychically pray against you may your ear be set free to night um the other thing that i have and i'm going to story tell this to y'all good pull them hands up say cut me lord um jesus teaches this principle okay y'all won't let me even get jesus teaches the principle of circumcision because he said i didn't come to destroy the law i don't have to i fulfilled it <laughs> So, but, but he consistently reiterates the teachings of the Old Testament and the Old Covenant. And one of the things he says is countercultural. Now, parables are kingdom encryptions. They're like codes you have to crack to get the deeper meaning. And Jesus told them this. Now, now if we were in this conference uh, and if we were in this revival where Jesus preached this, we would probably walk out and say, put Pastor Vincent back up. <laughs> When's the next bump? We would leave. I probably would too. Because Jesus opened up the Bible and Jesus said, hey, if anybody bears fruit and, and gets a good job and, and things finally go well in their life and folks start paying their tithes, God have mercy. The people are loyal and I don't have to police your attachment. You doing real good. He says if you start to bear fruit, guess what? I will cut it back. Now wait, whoa, whoa. I was just in favor. Come on, open up. I was just in acceleration. You told me it was about to speed up. Now you're talking about it's cutting back, but I prophesy to everybody in here that's experienced a cutback. Seem like you ain't been able to find your footing since 2020. He did not cut you because you did anything wrong. You were in line to be cut because you were bearing much fruit. And the devil can fight your personality. He can fight your addictions. He can fight your thought life. But that Negro can't touch your fruit. I wish you'd put your hand on your chest and say, fight my fruit I'm done going back and forth with you I'm done what you're believing for fight my fruit say what you want to say but fruit does not lie and if you bear too much Jesus is going to cut it back almost to the point of Acts 16 Gideon let me apply pressure here 
Gideon, you've got the fastest growing church in the world. You're, you're nice and you got your jeans on and you're sipping your coffee in the sanctuary. Wow, you're trendy, you know. We get to call you by your first name. Hey, baby, hey, Bill, how are you? Good to see you, bud. How's the kid? Yeah. You know, we, believe, we just soak. We don't, we don't go over into the emotionalism. And we got satellites everywhere. And so Gideon was like, man, I could fight with this army. <laughs> I've got an army behind me. God is like, no, no, you don't understand. A, a lot of that is water weight. A dehydrated generation looking for something to drink so they see a light and they start to run because they ain't had no real water. Gideon, if you want to win, son. Gideon, if you want to move and, 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 and fight, watch me. Listen, an effective warfare. Because I don't know about you, you're going to lie, but I grew up in a tradition where we just believed God, believed God, and we kept believing God, and then we forgot what we were believing for. So a lot of our prayer time replaced personal therapy because we forgot the objective of prayer is the answer. Mm. And when we got disappointed because our hearts don't like delay, and it seemed like the answer was not coming, what we did was became more more sanctimonious thinking that God was thinking about what he wanted to do for me so if I pray more and fast more and beat him upside the head eventually he'll do what I want but no when you getting ready to be cut get in you got too many of them around you mm -hmm. when you make it finally they gonna all remember you then they're gonna be like oh I remember when I asked to share, I asked to share it with him I remember that's my boy no we don't even know each other if I don't have your phone number you don't know me enough to say nothing negative you, you don't even deserve a text we've got to be very careful about what we allow around us come on I feel some Gideons in here God's about to do something where your expansion is gonna come by your decrease it's too much fluffing I'm working tonight mm -hmm. it's too much around you you got way too many fans for you to be this depressed you got way too many bros and sisters for you to want to kill yourself every other night you got way too many people liking your status I said that and sharing your post that you can't tell I'm a crackhead and I need some help help me son of God so he will cut you back to make sure that the fruit you're bearing is not more substantial than your roots. So circumcision is a foundational thing. I'm, I'm almost set. Now, one of the best things that could have happened to Timothy, I'm getting there, I promise you, because I, I got to eat. I'm so hungry. Okay. Um, we've established this principle. Now we've got to see it in real time in manifestation. And I'm going to say something that may sound a bit sexist. I promise you I mean no harm. But I, I, I would that, that, that women in general be moms and wives and do what they need to do and hustle and grind, but stop trying to make up for daddy. Yeah. You was with me two minutes ago. Now you're chewing sour lemons. I don't give a nickel's work of doll me about what you thought about what I just said. I said God gave you the prophecy is in the plumbing. And if you sit down when you go to the washroom, then God don't want you thinking like a man. He don't want you behaving yourself. That type of stress on the females. To I feel a chill in the Bronx. Yeah, y'all don't like that because you want to be just as strong as us. But there are certain things you need to realize is a privilege. Submission. It's not a law. It's a privilege. Why you want to take the trash out? We know you can do it by yourself, girl. Oh, it's quiet. I got to hurry up. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to fear. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, um, Timothy, the Bible calls him certain. I'm out your hair. Certain. If my theory is true, you, you, you have it in you right now. To get to a certain place. Say certain. That means that Timothy did enough in his life and on his social media and in his ministry and in his teaching. He did enough to develop a reputation. But do you want a reputation or do you want a legacy? I understand. You want to be famous right now for people that won't be in your life in three years? Or do you want to invest your time at constructing the future God called you to have? Come on, lift your hands and say bye-bye. I'm going to the future. Oh, I don't hear you say bye-bye. I fought 
for tomorrow. So, the women in Timothy's life realized what they just didn't have. And, and so they heard that the man of God was coming. And so his mama and grandma said, hey, this boy is weird. He, he up uh, reading the Bible and doing all kind of weird stuff. He won't play no basketball. He just cooped in his room. He, 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 just, he just weird. Will you take him? Will you take him? A certain man. So take him when he don't really need you. I mean, he is surviving on his own business cards and his own brand because we all, you know, he's surviving right now. He's on a good road. But what happens if your being on a good road is still not your potential? Now, you want stability. Every human does. But the, the notation that all stability is security is false because a lot of stagnation looks like stability. You're not stable, you're stuck. Come on, let's bust the devil open to the white meat. Things are not just working out. You just got comfortable. And you got to see the difference. Paul came and grabbed him. Now, I know this is old school. We don't do this no more. But, but I remember a day where if you laid hands on me at the altar and you, and you cast out whatever was in me. I'm about to get there. And I purged and foamed. I didn't just go home without help but because I believed, I, I'm talking about me, not you, so you don't get now. I believed that everything just happened at the altar. If I wanted a cigarette, it, it, when they put that oil on me, bam, gone. And here come nicotine, two or three in the morning. I know you lying. <laughs> We've been waiting on you because the altar starts the process. It does not perfect the person. So even if we deal with the problem, now we've got to touch your personality. You don't like that? Come on. Act like I'm beating a tambourine and shout with me. I said we, after we cast the devil out, we still got to deal with you. Because you are the reason the devil got there to begin with. So we've got to clean the house before we kick out the guests. Paul Angel, I'm glad that I didn't believe that altar work was more than triage. Do you know how many people are dying going to the altar in a false hope that after they get up, everything is going to be different? No, sugar. You're going to have a hard day where you're going to miss him. Come on, let's be real. You're going to have a hard day where you miss her. And watch me. Since you're quiet, I'm going to crack it open. And don't let the sin be good because all sin don't feel bad. You won't be honest. I know. Lock up. It's okay. Shut down on me. Some sin feel good. I know a lot of happy sinners. We got to stop acting like every sinner is walking around convicted and condemned now some of them much is content and then we give them church for free everywhere so as long as they get here and use their praise as their apology they never have to make a decision about what they're dancing for but God's trying to grow a generation that's okay with being cut then hit the carpet scream Lord cut me come on Paul So Paul takes the man. Now here's what's ironic. I'm almost done. What's ironic about this is I mentioned that historically he had a reputation. He was probably, most historians say, historians say, between the ages of maybe 16 or 17 to about 20. He was really grown, especially if his mother was a Jewish, because they believe that uh, at the age of 12, you were bar mitzvah, you know, this is my beloved son. So he'd been grown, and, and, and so if you are not willing to sacrifice your grownness to submit yourself to the correction of something, you may lose your life. This is why you feel like a zombie right now. It has nothing to do with a pandemic and a time change. Something in you died and you don't even want to recognize it. You've not grieved that bit. Why do I feel real chilly in here? You've not grieved the business that didn't work. You didn't grieve the engagement that didn't work. You didn't grieve the best friend that slept with your man. You didn't grieve being rejected by your family because they didn't like what church you go to. You didn't grieve none of that control and witchcraft. What you did was you moved on and found something else to do out of board. I'm working in here so that you could get a breakthrough in your mind. Pulled him out of his reputation, gave him to Paul. 
I, I taught you at the beginning of this, I'm not sure here, that they were normally eight days old. Now, I don't want to be too graphic, but a procedure like that at eight days old is a lot different. Things don't look how they used to look. So uh, uh, at 17 years old, imagine submitting to a grown man who is not a medical doctor. We have no record of Paul ever doing this before or after. And he takes you from where you are. I love your word. In your journey and says, first things first. Okay, You're on your way to places where Jews worship. You're on your, play, uh, on your way to an audience you ain't never had before. You're about to go into uh, an environment of people that don't really know what to think or what to believe right now. They're mad at those of you Christians that are actually following him. But I want you to go with me. Can I just give you a little bit? What I believe is this is the season of your life where God's going to end you having to journey by yourself. Listen, baby, it don't have to be 10 or 20. You good if you got a good two and a half. If you got somebody that's willing to look out for you. If you got lipstick on your teeth, you have no real friends. God is raising people that's going to tell you an ugly truth. Truth. I'm working in here. A hard reality. I'm not going to have you out here looking stupid. And you won't catch me at tables where they're talking about you negatively. I'm moving on. Um, so, so Paul's heart, I'm sorry, Paul's heart, Paul's heart was because of where you're going, listen to me or you miss it, it's your calling that determines your cut. Paul knew where Timothy was going. Timothy was just doing what he could do at a certain point. And he reached a life peak. Come on, open your mouth. He reached a plateau. He was in denial about what was really going on. And here this anointing comes and grabs him. And he grabs him. And Timothy is like, all right, where are the adjutants? Where are the mints and the water? I need the holy oil. Where is my garment? Come on, let's go, Paul. I've been watching you on TV. And I've been watching you on TV. I watch your live stream. I'm excited to be in the number. And the apostle Paul says, slow your roll. I'm going, watch me, I'm going to cut you for them. Timothy had done nothing wrong but live. And he left or he lived with the hand he was dealt with. So having to be circumcised didn't mean he was in sin. He just hadn't been cut. A 17-year-old boy in the hands of a stranger. The hands of a stranger. Now we know why Paul says stuff about Timothy like, I don't have anybody else that I trust as much. Because he, I'm going to tell you why. We should not ordain who we cannot correct. Y'all hear them church mice peeing on cotton downstairs? I know. If you want a certificate, I got to test you with the knife. Matter of fact, I'm not going to even use a position to bait you or bribe you. I'm not about to seduce you. You're not a fish and I'm not a fisher. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how you handle me saying you were out of order. You were dead wrong. I know. Go back and apologize. Follow peace with all men. Holiness without which no, if it be possible. And if you can't handle that, this ordination is too heavy for your neck. I know where you're going. I know where you're going, Timothy. I know exactly where you're going. So, so I've decided to take you with me. I've decided to become uh, uh, an instrument of God in your hand. Be very careful about ministry gifts and or anointings uh, that come to you and want to be your mama, your daddy, your papa, your spiritual auntie. We got it all these days. Spiritual grandpa, we got all that stuff. And what they do is they leverage their service to you based upon how much you can do for them. But the whole intent is not for you to bribe your way into somebody's heart or somebody's audience. Come on, get mad now. Let's bust the devil open. No, no, no. I'm not about to cartwheel, footwork, and windmill to try to be accepted. I know what I am, but I also need to know when I'm wrong. I don't need a cheerleader. What I need is somebody who knows how to use a knife. Because we prefer hugs and kisses. We don't like knives. 
But some of your greatest attacks is going to come from a hug and a kiss. If you don't believe me, ask Jesus. What you need is somebody that says, I love you enough to cut you. No, this is not working. Leave that alone. Come away from that. Come on and make a choice and decision. That's love. So Paul cut him. And when you're going through circumcision, sometimes you'll feel like you're being cut because you did something wrong. No, okay. You, you might be cut <laughs> because of what's in you. I didn't forget my point. Your mama married in mixture. So your daddy's a Greek and the Jews know it. And you know how church people are. When, when there's a conspiracy or some gossip behind how you got, come on, open up. How you got where you are. Church folk love the tea. Yes, they do. We have people who we have people who make money off the tea. It's crazy. You, I, I know people that monetize people's misery. It's the worst thing in the world. Who does that? But they know. Now, here's this interesting. Timothy had never even been with Paul before. This is their first trip. And Paul's like, yo, I know they're going to act like they're not looking. <laughs> but they've been scrolling and watching and snooping and sneaking. So they know who you are. Can I give the devil? a word on your behalf you know I'm coming why are you trying to act like that I'm on the way and I'm going to make a lot of noise I'm going to my future whether you like it or not shout hallelujah they've been watching they know your daddy. Now, I know that doesn't mean much to you, but when his daddy conceived him with his mama, he brought everything that he was. He brought everything that he craved, all of that iniquity operating in the bloodline. Now I can give it what I want to because you don't realize that one of the issues with hypocrisy and judgment in the church is this. Maybe I did not ask for what's active in me. Everybody ain't bound because they want to be come on let's be real some people came to the world with good and bad if that were not the case David wouldn't have said I was shaping in sin before I ever saw anything crazy smoked anything crazy come on open up let's not be religious you ain't always been what you is right now and every now and again when a hard season come you gotta put the old pot down come on let's go to church here you got to say no 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 in the name of Jesus this is the last season in your life where you play necromancy you will not continue to resurrect the dead you and the old you you got to let that soul tie die that way the next time you do a victory lap you really got the victory so um yeah so um he, he cut him watch me because the mixture could have impacted Timothy's mandate. I, I'm going to cut you because you are a must. And it's okay to be a little of this and a little bit of that. But church people will receive from you if they know you circumcised. So forgive me for inflicting this very purposeful, painful procedure upon you. Allow me to see, see how grown you really are. And I'm going to do for you at 17 what somebody should have done for you at seven days. I'm, I'm going to retroactively govern your maturity from this point forward. Because you can be with this or you can be with that. You can do it on your own or you can do it with me under wisdom and teaching and let me cut you. And I'm not trying to control you. And because a controlling relationship will act like they are obligated to build the relationship on correction. No. Hello, sometimes just say hi. Don't, I don't want a prophecy every day. And if you start talking in tongues too much in Chipotle, I'm going to call the cops. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Be normal. <laughs> Amen. You felt absolutely nothing while ordering that chicken. All right. Sorry. But there's a word I've ministered and expressed this to Jalil with this story, what fascinates me, and I want to just share it with you. The principle here is something that we don't talk about. When I'm dealing with the subject of circumcision, the whole principle behind it from Genesis back was we pray. Because there's a lot of people that are accurate, even in the prophetic, but they're just not believable people. You can't prophesy to people and get their panties off the next night. Hey, 
hey, predatory pulpit be burned by fire. Everybody using a mic to seduce. Why am I going here? Seduce and molest and rape and rob and orgies and ruin and contaminate be burned by fire, blood, vapor, smoke, thunder. The cloud come upon you in Jesus' name. You're going to cut me. It means that you got to see me naked. And I got to trust that what I've confessed to you won't end up in somebody's Facebook post. I got to make sure that if we're cool now and I confide in you that if we get uncool, you're not going to weaponize what I was transparent about. You're not going to do that. If we're going to do the cut thing, we both going to be in this together. And we will not have covenant before we've had a cut. Reproach. In closing, let's prepare. <laughs> uh, in closing, if every gospel artist in America heard this, every church pastor, and I don't know why in the world y'all want to do this, a fool calls himself to do this. You have no clue. I don't understand why y'all be so excited. Cafe church, all right. Going out there, you've signed up for a permanent career of being broken up with <laughs> forever. Right. So, 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 circumcising seasons, circumcising relationships, circumcising situations are not about punishment, they are about promotion. Because if you can't handle the knife, you can't even handle a name. The, a name will kill you. Now, the beautiful thing is that it's supposed to hurt. Andele Maries, it's supposed to hurt. And the reason it's supposed to hurt is because when you've been cut, shut me up, uh, come on, shut me up, please. Please. Imagine having to, on, by foot, walk on tour after swelling in the place of your reproduction organ you see, I believe it was supposed to be a painful walk. Because if I can endure the pain of the knife of somebody that loves me, the persecution of those that hate me won't kill me. I'm used to walking it out bloody. You don't have time for that. I'm used to feeling swollen and in pain. So when you criticize me about being with Paul or being under the move or whatever, it's going to, it's going to be fine. I know a knife. So it's very little Satan or the people that host him can do to hurt my feelings. I've been cut before. It's important that you realize. Now, the talented need this the most. Because what I won't tell you or what they won't tell you is that it's not easy pastoring talented people. It is not. I know you don't like that because y'all full of gifts. Isn't that wonderful? You just gift this everywhere. And yet your love life sucks. You got a mighty soprano, but refuse to date somebody that's dating you. Right. So in a, in a circumcising situation, you receive counsel and you receive information that removes reproach from you. I don't want to expose my... And there are things that you can't do as a gifted person yeah. that may not be said. But I remember being groomed in, but shun the appearance of it. And there will be things that people will be allowed to do that you can't just because of reproach. And, and because most of us are called to weak believers, sometimes even your humanity will be enough to make them stumble. You've got to stop being musical monsters. Not able to manage your own addictions, but want to sing other people through theirs. And you need good teaching and good relationships where you can say, hey, I love you so much, but I'm too drunk right now to sing this song. All right, let's hurry up and shout again. Y'all don't like a lot? No? Okay. I don't want to just be blessed and promoted and prospered. Tell me the truth. Tell me you pronounced that word wrong. <laughs> Tell me them clothes don't fit you no more. You've gotten a little different. Let's be honest. Why y'all so uncomfortable? 
We need truth-bearing relationships and opportunity to manage our growth because even growth needs management. And many of you are believing God for a blessing that your life is not set up for. Paul used his knife to come for iniquity in Timothy. Hey, you ain't do nothing wrong. This ain't about sin or scandal. This is, hey, on the wrong day, God help me, on, on, the, on the wrong day, and you've not managed your depression the way you need to, and then, you know, church people have us thinking it's okay to take Tylenols, but not stuff that regulates your chemicals. It's really weird to me, and um, I think that we've not done enough research to figure out how we're managing our growth, and so if we don't deal with reproach now, your success could kill you. Now, 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 this is a lottery generation, so I know we roll the dice with our life and who we date and where we move and just hope to land up successful somewhere. But the real truth is you need a line that, that consistently checks for reproach. Don't be hypnotized by your own wine. Even if they think you're wonderful, you stay low. And the problem is the applause of men is intoxicating to talented people. Because if you clap for me in church, I don't have to remember that they didn't clap for me at home. And many people are in ministry, I know you want me to turn my plow, to fulfill their personal esteem issues. The only place I feel loved is in my gift and in what I can do for you. But if I have a bad season, right, I know, I've lived it. The point is, is your growth has to be managed. There is such a such thing as wild growth. You just don't want to be growing without direction. You're going nowhere fast. You're on a treadmill in life. Because you marry, or hopefully at the level of your knowledge of your assignment. It didn't go wrong. It started there. Because many of us compromised because we wanted something that could shut up our own condemnation. So we refused to allow the relationship to be vetted. And then everybody that tried to warn you, they were trying to take your man. But, and he was ugly, though. You're the only one that want him. I'm like, you know, it's okay. You got to grab your purse because I'm walking. It's okay, sis. You see him in a way don't none of us do. Praise the Lord God. <laughs> but even stuff like, you know, managing that growth, it's, it's almost akin to being an NBA player or somebody who makes it real big and has no business savvy. I give you $20 million. It could bring the worst out of you. Because you want the call of a millionaire, you don't want the habits of one. You're still believing by faith what should be coming by hard work. Okay? I know you didn't like that either. So, what? Jesus saved the day. Was that the name of it? Let's do it. Maybe they'll wake up. We'll do another stanza. He saved the day. Because some of you, he's going to have to. He's going to really have to. Because a lot of the decisions you're going to have to make in the name of your freedom is going to make people mad. And if you don't like people being mad at you, just prepare to stay here in life. You're going nowhere. You can claim it all you want, okay? But you got to be prepared to lose because he's going to cut you. And in every season of your life, that influence is going to get more. If they've not been loyal to you, please stop me in a while. Okay. <laughs> they've not been trustworthy. They've not stewarded your influence the correct way. As a matter of fact, what they did was align themselves to you out of disappointment from former leaders and they tried to come and out and vent and use your need of the gift and your need of that real talent on the team. So they showed up and they began to hiss behind your back in, in restaurants and to other pastors that offered to ordain them quickly because the Lord said that he gave you a slow hand, you're cautious and you're a woman of great sagaciousness and great wisdom. So because you handled the loss well, and you never talked about the money you let them borrow. And you never talked about how you covered some of the adultery. You never let any of that stuff out. But what you did was you continued to teach. And you, the Lord told me you labored in it. You, did, you were like a bulldog. You just started to build and plow. So two things will begin to happen now. Now, at the turn of this summer, that book and then the subsequent books must be finished and out. Because God 
has already started talking to publishers that are not on a, a small scale about whatever programs you've been writing up. And I see you at a desk full of proposals, and many of them were born in one of the darkest seasons of your ministry. But there was a place of great pregnancy that came, May 2020. The Lord began to visit you, and you begin to just write jot and simple stuff down, and you've not taken yourself as serious as you should. But this is going to be the season where you move into retroactive release. So this book is, is going to help men in their lives, uh, uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. And it will be so that your, your, your days before you will be greater than what they were behind you. And the second thing the Lord wants me to tell you is, this is Sunday, Wednesday night, he heard the frustration of your heart about this team. There is a break right now in this team. There's some chaos and there's some some, uh, some chatter because I see people, uh, I want to phrase this right, I see people in competition about who's going to get closest to your heart. And what the Lord is going to do is show you Ishmael and Isaac. One wants your microphone, the other wants your mantle. Father, bless this woman of God and give her everything that you've decided for her in Jesus' name. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. You, you came with Pastor Vincent all the way in the back. You, will you stand up real quick? Lift your hands. The Lord said your life is not over. And I don't know what this is, but I see you in, in, in such a state of grief where it's difficult to get out the bed some days. You've been struggling to even have phone conversations. You have no taste for any of that stuff. And then there's some disappointments that you've been having to uh, sort through mentally with some extended family, okay, uh, that was not there for you or uh, did some criminal things. It's, it's like I'm seeing some theft around you. And uh, what God is going to do is visit you in the realm of your so okay okay so so okay so that you don't feel like you went to the grave with her the enemy is trying to arrest you with regret and what God's going to do is bring so much restoration to your life it, it will be it will be unrecognizable restoration God's going to clean you up so powerfully and then the business that's been staggering is going to live. Get ready. You're about to see answered prayers. That's what's going to happen. Woman of God, I saw, um, I saw uh, a deed land dead on your head. And, and the warfare that you've been over, the, 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 the warfare you've been in concerning the terra firma and uh, having a home for your vision and having a place where you can feed the poor like you need to and where you can have those young women that uh, have been prostituting uh, live there. You want transitional houses and you want to be able to feed. There were some grants that came around that you almost got, but the things were not lined up in the way that they should. But I heard the Lord say, I'm sending you an anointed attorney. Oh, yeah. I'm about to send you legal help, and it's coming from the sanctuary. Rejoice. That building is yours. Come on, put those hands together. If you believe God will use somebody else's bankruptcy to bring you into a place of failure, just because it worked against him don't mean it can't work for me. God's getting ready to cause cities to go on sale, neighborhoods to be on the auction. He's getting ready to empty out warehouses. He's going to empty out old schools and you will look back and say thank you 2020 you may have been hell for them but I came out on the top of my game and I will never be broke grace I'm praying that God send you people I'm, I'm praying that the Lord send you people that, that won't be afraid to cut you. Jesus. Hey, there is, there is nothing wrong with your body. Will you stand up? Women of your level of loyalty and faithfulness ha have to undergo meetings in rooms in hell. 
where devils that's been after, because here's another lesson. Something's happening now. <laughs> What's after you didn't just come after you. What we're dealing with is demonic stalkers that started looking at you through your great grandfather and said, give me them too. That blood thing in the women in your family is not coming nigh you. I bind you fear of infirmity. Touch this uterus. Touch this belly. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's go to the other shows, I hit. Come on, move. Come on, I want to heal. Yeah, she's got more work to do. A promotion on that job. I want to heal now. She's been robbed for 48 months. Come on, let it be so. Hey, glory. Hey. All right, y'all messing with me. Somebody say, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, 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 I'm trying. Wow, oh, glory. Hey. Come on, there's a stranger in the city. I'm trying to get out of here. And he's healing. Come on, y'all, let's go. I said he's healing. All kinds of disease. Wow. All kinds of disease. All manner of disease. Diseases in the body. Diseases in the relationships. Diseases in the marriage. Diseases in the mind. Uh, diseases in the will. Uh, diseases in the intellect. Uh, diseases, diseases in the emotions. Hey, hey, glory. I'm trying to go. Come on, if you are in need of a medical miracle, or if you need a mental miracle, come on, Zion, let's go up and get it now. Come on, heal my mind. Heal my mind. Heal my mind. Come on, no condemnation. Hey, heal my mind. No condemnation. Wow. Heal my mind. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, praise him for healing in your thought life. What would you do, Lord, if I told you he's about to deal with them bad memories and replace it with some fresh vision? Baby, I'm a circumcised man. And the past don't torment no more. Because I don't live there no more. I changed my address uh, to 1234 uh, Victory Street, uh, 78910 uh, Destiny Boulevard. Uh, I've moved to the future. Uh, and you can stay here if you want. Uh, but I'm on my way out of here. Somebody say glory. Hey, 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 that felt real good. Come on, say glory. This is a good place for a hair glory. Come on, let it out of your belly. Hey, glory, glory. I love you for the knife. I praise you for the cut. I made the cut. Come on, go. Woo! Felt like I was dying. Felt like I was going to bleed out. But I made the cut. Come on. I made the cuts. I made the cuts. I live through the cuts. I walk through the cuts. Come on, Zion. Praise your God tonight. Because when you get the knife, the only other place to go is the next. And you've been being cut because God's getting ready to bring you into your next, to bring you into your now, to bring you into your necessary, to bring you into your real nature. You've been hiding out so that people would not judge you. But get ready to see you that you ain't never seen before. Hey. Hey. I'm to, my soul love you. Hey. Heart in my flesh adore you. In a dry and a weary land where there is no water. Come on and cut. Even if it hurt. I don't want the fake friends. I don't want the lying allegiances. I don't want the false teachers. I don't want somebody to flatter me. I need to be guided. I need to be cultivated. Because the oil is on me. But it's going to be a little stronger. Not many days now. What's on me is going to weigh. Just a little more than what it used to. Will you cut me? Oh. Wow. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. 
with the, the knife. The knife is for what's next. If he rebukes you, challenges you, it's because something's coming that you can't see right now. Now, you've been shouting over the blessings you can see. Would you give him praise for what you don't know that he's working on right now? No, come on, do it in faith. Come on, do it in faith. Come on, obey me. Open yourself. Come on, Zion, we've got to reach. Come on, thank you. You shouted over the past. You shouted over the present. Is there somebody with the future in their feet? That's the devil, you should have killed me when you had the chance. Because now that I'm alive, I'm going to give you this work with my worship, with my obedience, with my service, with my sanctification. Our God is a consuming fire and he's cutting away. I said he's cutting away. He's not just the God of addition. Not just the God of multiplication. He is the God of division. And every now and then he comes to divine. He'll separate the night from day. The darkness from the light. He'll remove it and pull that thing. My soul loves Jesus. <laughs> Bless his name. Will you just respectfully encourage somebody next to you? Uh, and, and tell them, congratulations. You made the cut. Come on, tell them that. No, 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 no. You, hey, hey. You must don't know what it is to almost lose your mind. Now, you can do it and take this pretty church where you want it. I want to talk to some folk that knew they was about to be crazy. I was one more test back to my old self, but I pulled around and survived. Wow. Hey, I made it out. Glory to God. He cut me. Thank you for the breakup. Thank you for hissing at me. Thank you. I appreciate you. Much obliged. Is this, is this mom? Okay. Hey, uh, Glenn, you're messing with me. Uh, you know, you're the strong friend. And, and, and so it's, it, it's difficult because you just always look so happy and so jovial and you got a gift, a real gift of encouragement. So it's difficult to have hard seasons. Okay. You're under an immense amount of pressure right now. And you're in a war about what you need to do about this school situation, okay? And, and what the Holy Spirit is about to do is make a provision for you. Glory to God that your obedience and your consecration has opened up. Baby, some new friends are coming if I be God's man. And these will be those that will celebrate you because you're the one planning the dinners. and the, But there's a switch coming now where God's going to send you people that's going to tell you, hey, you're doing too much. Pull back, have a big heart, but guard it. And, and don't allow people to use you. In the name of Jesus, I bind and curse this doormat agenda where people like to walk over and use her. And I prophesy you into your education. Money cometh to what you got going on next. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord, will you? Now listen. It's, it's hard. It's hard for some people to understand why praises like this hit different. Because <laughs> the other praise, we thank him for the stuff. Right? Hey, you did. But then when you think about what he called you to lose, just so that you could live. 
And then the person next to you would have probably quit if they got cut the way you did. But whom the Lord loves, he chastises and he scourgeth. That means to prove every son he receives of his own. Keep me there, bring it down. I come from a, mil a, mil I come from a military family. And um, when I would get in trouble, because I was smart but bad, my grandmother was a saintly woman of God. My experience is the saints know how to whoop. They just know how to use a belt, okay? And uh, when I would get in trouble, I would remember trying to fake and hyperventilate so she would not hit me. So I'd give myself asthma attacks and I'd start overreacting like I was seizing. And mother didn't care. She would, she would just beat me till I cut. Right. Now, I don't ever remember getting a whooping and deciding I was going to dance after it. Yeah, because when I was a child, I spake as a child. Understood. But now when the Lord corrects me, I'm like, whoa, I just dodged a major. Whoa, hey. Now, if you can dance your way out of disappointment, the real saints can hear the word no from a bank and say, you must got something bigger. Thank you. You can put that belt on me and I'm going to praise you. Come on. you shouting because wisdom saved my life wisdom spared my time glory to God hey thank you 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, hey, thank you, 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 come on, thank you, maybe it's the word, cheers, 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 Jesus, 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 Terry, cheers, 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 Jesus, Jesus, cheers, 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 Jesus, Jesus, cheers, cheers, Jesus, Jesus, cheers, 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 Jesus, 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 Jesus,
I'm under arrest. Come on here. I love him. Oh, yeah. Come on, praise him. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad. Hey, Jesus, 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 I've been a lawyer, you've been a sister and a brother, you've been a bridge, now bridge over trouble water. Yes, you brought me out. 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 Granddaddy's walking cane. Granddaddy's walking cane. Grandmama's leading post. His name is Jesus. Easy kill the wheel. Wheel in the middle of a wheel. Wheel in the middle of a wheel. Wheel in the middle of a wheel. He was the burning bush. He was the lily of the valley. But in the morning star, his name is Jesus. Jesus, 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 and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Well, for God had highly exalted him and have given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee, 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 hey, every knee, every knee, every knee. Every knee, every knee, every knee. Bow, bow, bow. Get down now. Bow, bow, bow. Bow, bow, bow. Tell no cancer. Tell my drugs. Tell this sickness. Bow, bow, bow. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Call you Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's my rock, rock in a weary land, rock in a weary land. Hey, rock in a weary land, 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 rock in a weary land.
on, we don't let our bishop dance by themselves. Come on, Zion. Come on, church. I'm praising them because wisdom is coming. I had some problems and I didn't know what to do. But I fooled around and got wisdom. And then I got some understanding. Because he cut me wide open. And he gave me a new heart. And a new mind. Oh, yes, he did. Hey, I got to go. I got to go. Oh. I got to go. I got one more in me. Everybody jump. Huh? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 jackets on and things I need you to I know he said we shouldn't ordain people too quickly but I'm going to ordain everybody in here for about two seconds and I'm going to give you a license to speak to the person next to you come on look at them turn to them look at them in their face tell them I'm ordained now so I can say it tell them neighbor I decree that the rest of this year will be filled with blessings, overflow, increase, and miracles because, because, 
you survived the cut. Now praise him for your survival. I survived the cut. I said I survived the cut. I survived the cut. I didn't think I would. I was ready to give it all up. But look at me. I survived the cut. Now I can declare it was good for me that I had been afflicted. Yeah. Don't look at them crazy. They're just glad they survived the cut. I survived the pruning. I survived the cut off. I survived the drawback. I'm better because they left. Subtraction never felt so good. Yeah. Oh my God. There's a wind blowing through here. I said there's a wind blowing through here. Somebody's leaving this room better because you survived what other people died from. You survived what other people didn't make it through. I'm a cut survivor. A cut survivor. A cut survivor. I will survive any cut. I gotta go. I'm a cut survivor. I got the band-aids to prove it. I got the wound to prove it. I didn't just get cut. I got hit. Goodbye, shout. I know, cool. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! Some people got to leave, but some of us got to praise because we survived the cut. said we survived the cut. Sometimes I get you know sometimes I promise promise we're leaving but sometimes I get discouraged when I look at my cut and I look at everybody else's cut. And I'm trying to figure out why in the world would God cut me this deep and let some of them go so loosely. But I came to tell you the deeper the cut, the bigger the promise. So if he cuts you deep, that's because the promise that's up ahead of you is something that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I don't know where you are in this building, but if I'm talking to you, take 30 seconds and hit the flow. Hit the flow. Hit the flow. Hit the flow. Woo! Oh. Hey. Hey. Survive the cut. was cut a year. But look at Clap those hands. I need to hear a clap in the Bronx. I need to see some clappers in the Bronx. Where's the tambourine? Clap those hands, everybody. This is the sound that God loves. I said, clap those hands. Clap those hands. This is how the shifters dance. 
Come on, ship! Hey! Hey! Oh! Clap those hands! Listen. Apostle Stevenson had one more place that he had to be before the night was over, an engagement he had to make, so he couldn't do it, and I'm not going to put a price on it, but if this word was for you tonight, you got to sow. I ain't talking to everybody. I'm just talking to those that said, I needed this word for my survival, and I needed this word for my future. You got to sow tonight. You got to sow at the level that you receive. So if you receive that word on a high level, you need to sow on that same level. Now you only cheating yourself. No, don't let the praise die down. Because when I sow this seed, that's when I'm really going to hit it. Because what I put in the ground, <laughs> I said what I put in the ground, it's going to come back to me. It ain't coming back the way I gave it. It's coming back good measure. I said it's coming back good measure. Press down. Shake a nigga to the cash out. The cash app. I'm about to run. The cash app is J Spence M I N. If you got cash, you run up here. If you got your card, you bring it up. But you need to sow. If you've been cut, you need to sow. Come on, standing. Everybody standing. Nah, 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 nah. And for those that are sowing, I want to make a declaration over your seed. I want to decree a thing over you. Before you leave this room, J. Spence, S P E N C E M I N. Everybody standing. Everybody. Everybody standing. We going. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, no. I know you're tired of talking to your neighbor. Everybody standing. But I want you to do me one last favor tonight. I want you to take your hand and place it on your neighbor's shoulder. Come on. Come on. This is the power of touching and agreeing. Come on. Place it on your neighbor's shoulder. If they move and never mind them. But you need the people that are still in place. And I need you to declare to them. Tell them, neighbor, eyes have not seen. No, 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 no. They're not receiving that properly. I need you to receive what your neighbor is speaking into your life. I need you to tell them eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what's getting ready to happen all because you survived the cut. Now, if you know that's for you, I want you to sow and I want you to praise God like you crazy. I want you to praise God with everything that you got in you because come on, bring that seed, bring that seed. Bring that C. J. Spence, M. I. M. Everybody standing. We're going. We're going. Oh. Whew. I just heard the Lord say before the week is over, he's going to do something for everybody that would receive it. How you going to receive it? I said, how you going to receive it? I dare you to put a praise out for what he's going to do this week. Come on, everybody praise him. I said this week. Hey. They're still sewing. Come on, put those hands together. Dismiss you. 
But I believe I was cut for this week. I'm trying to let you go. We in here too long, Bishop. Lift those hands, Father. Come on, lift those hands. Stand, stand, stand. Some of y'all staring at me. Stand. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for what our ears have heard. We thank you for cutting us. We thank you for the results of that cut, even if we haven't seen it right now. And Father, we believe by faith that this will be the last year that we're in the position that we're in. But we believe over the course of this year, you're going to shift some things for us. Father, we thank you for three years. Take us home safely, praising and glorifying your name. We thank you for it, and we give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed. Leave with a praise. Leave with it. Come on, leave with a praise. Come on, leave. Yes, I believe there's, be, there's food that's being sold downstairs. So if you want some good soul food because everything is closed, run downstairs and patronize that business establishment. All right, God bless you. You be dismissed in Jesus' name.